Hi, I'm Jennifer Schock. I'm the women's pastor in our life groups ministry. You know, these last few weeks, we've been reflecting on questions, the questions that Jesus asked and is still asking, the nature of questions, the purpose of questions. And, uh, you know, we're living in a season in which many of us likely feel like we have a lot more questions than we do answers right now. To me, the future itself is in the shape of a gigantic question mark. Um, But though that may be true, we know that God who holds your future, my future, the future of our country, the future of our world, he is not a question. Uh, He's the answer. So questions are here to stay, but so is God. You know who asks a lot of questions in scripture besides Jesus is Paul. If you look at the book of Romans, which Paul wrote, you'll see that he asks tons of questions. And today we're going to look at Romans chapter 8. Picking up in verse 18, Paul writes, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? Now in this passage, Paul is addressing that tension that we live in, that we know that someday all of creation, including our bodies, will be made new when Christ returns. So we know it, but we don't see it yet. And Paul asks in verse 24, for who hopes for what he sees? That is a great question. Paul is saying, you know, you don't anticipate or look forward to something that's already right in front of you. No, you hope for or desire what is not yet in front of you. And so here Paul is talking about hope as a verb, as something you do. Hope is also a noun. It's a thing. It's a feeling that what we want is going to happen. There's this billboard uh, that I've seen around town, and it claims, in science lives hope. You know, science has been at the center of our uh, local and national dialogue for months now. Many of us are hoping for a vaccine, for a cure, for science to lead the way back to the life to which we are accustomed. And science is good. Uh, To me, the beauty of science is the beauty of God's mind. And he uses science to accomplish his good purposes. But our hope is not in science. It's in God. David asks in Psalm 39, 7, And now, O Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. There's this connection between hope and waiting, and we don't love waiting. (laughs) Waiting is hard. Right after Paul asks in Romans 8, 24, for who hopes for what he sees, he writes, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. So we wait with patience and with expectation. What's God going to do? What's God going to do? This is a question filled not with despair, but with expectancy. My Bible dictionary actually defines hope this way. Hope is trustful expectation, the anticipation of a favorable outcome under God's guidance. So we've seen what he has done in the past, and we can expect that he'll continue to act in keeping with his character in the present and in the future. That's what creates hope. So we can wait not passively, but expectantly. We can face this difficulty with a confident expectation of God's good outcomes. Because as Paul writes in Romans 5, 3 and 4, suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the hope that we have in you. You are our hope, Jesus. And we know for those who love you, you work all things together for good, for your glory. We trust you today. Amen.